بسم الله بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن ولاه ما بعد We are doing Surah Al-Araf and uh, Surah Al-Araf is a unique surah in that it is uh, perhaps, uh, it, in fact it is the longest surah in the Quran uh, whose primary focus is nothing but stories. More than eight prophets are mentioned in explicit detail. Their stories one after the other, beginning with Prophet Adam alayhi salam, going through Nuh and Shu'aib and all of them until Prophet Musa and the bulk of the story is about Prophet Musa alayhi salam. So today's short khatr, I'm going to remind myself and all of you of the wisdom of the Quranic stories. Some of our scholars have said that one third of the Quran is theology one-third is stories and one-third is laws. One-third is theology, Allah and the angels and heaven and hell. One-third is stories of the past and one-third is laws. It's a bit of an exaggeration. Nonetheless, it is something that is mentioned in our books of tafsir. So if one-third of the Quran is about stories, then the question arises, why? And what is the purpose and wisdom of these stories? The Quranic term for story is qissa. And qissa means from the word qasas, from the word qassa, which means to retrace your strep, steps, means to go back and cover the ground you've already covered. So when we say a qissa, it's as if we're going back and doing the events all over again. And therefore, there's a wisdom for us to retrace the history of the previous generations. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions many adjectives about Quranic stories. Of them, Allah says the Quranic stories are ahsan al-qasas, the best of all stories. So every story in the Quran is the best story. Of them is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna hadha lahu al-qasas al-haq. These are the true stories. So every story in the Quran is verbatim, it is true. Now obviously by verbatim, we don't mean when Allah says Adam says he's speaking Arabic or Musa said he's speaking Arabic but it means it happened and you can tell a story by meaning you don't have to tell a story by quoting the exact words and this explains why sometimes the same incident has different wordings Adam says this here and Adam says that there but the gist or the meaning is the same so Allah says in هذا له القصص الحق every story is true Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that the Quranic stories لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة in the Quranic stories there is Ibra and Ibra means morals, wisdoms, lessons. So these are some of the adjectives that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to describe stories. Stories, by the way, are something that are intrinsically things that humans love. What do we tell our children all the time? Stories. In fact, what are the entertainment, the people that watch dramas and Hollywood and books? What is it other than stories? And every good speaker, you take any speaking class, they will say, have a story in your lecture. Stories are something Allah created us to love. We pay attention to stories. So it's not surprising that Allah chooses the best of all stories. And Allah chooses true stories. And Allah chooses the stories that have morals and wisdoms in them. And of the wisdoms of of why there are so many stories in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran, وَكُلَّنْ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فُؤَادَكَ And we will tell you all of these stories of the previous prophets so that your chest or your heart, meaning your iman, will be strengthened. Now, this ayah is addressed directly to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah is speaking to him in the singular. I'm going to tell you these stories to make your iman stronger. So if the iman of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is intended to become stronger through these Quranic stories, how about us? How should it affect us? And so one of the main wisdoms of these stories is to strengthen our iman by showing us universal laws across every culture, society, time and place. These universal laws, Allah calls them Sunan Allah or Sunnat Allahi Fi Khalqi. There are universal historical laws of them, people who speak the truth will be mocked and rejected. Of them, the powerful and elite will always want to reject the message of submission to Allah. Of them is that in the beginning, the rejection will be there, but in the end, always the righteous will be the winners. The Fir'aun and the Fir'aunic followers will always fail in the long run. So these are of the wisdoms of the Quranic stories that we extract universal laws that transcend any one time, any one place, any one civilization 
civilization of the uh, uh, universal laws as well is warning signs for those who reject Allah and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we benefit as well from the truthfulness of the prophetic message every prophet came with the same message every prophet was ridiculed and rejected and eventually it was the prophet and his followers who were successful of the wisdoms as well of Quranic stories and with this inshallah we will conclude on this long point of the wisdoms of Quranic stories especially for us is that every story we can derive practical manifestations of Islamic principles that we apply in our lives it is one thing to read about the blessings of patience great then we read the story of Prophet Ayyub and we see how Allah tested Prophet Ayyub and all of a sudden patience takes on a new meaning we see the Prophet Ya'qub and how Allah tested Ya'qub and patience takes on a new meaning. It's one thing to read about jealousy. It's another thing to see the effects of jealousy in the brothers of Yusuf and how blind it made them that they were almost willing to kill their blood brother. And these are overall righteous people. In the end, Allah forgives them. So if jealousy can drive even a semi-righteous person so mad that they're going to kill somebody, how about me and you, how much more cautious we have to be? So it's one thing to read jealousy, it's another thing to read the story of Yusuf and understand jealousy. Forgiveness as well, forgiveness of Allah Azza wa and of others, Yusuf alayhi salam, how he forgives his brothers at the end. Once again, it's one thing to read stories, uh, to read the blessings of forgiveness, it's another thing to see its manifestation and it is not a coincidence therefore that when the Prophet ﷺ conquers Mecca and he is at the most powerful stage of his life and his enemies, his enemies who persecuted him are literally groveling for their lives. At that point in time, it's not a coincidence. He quotes them the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. And he plucks the very ayah from the Quran. And he quotes what Yusuf said to his brothers. That la tathriba alaykum al There's not even going to be criticism from now on. Forget forgiveness. It's not even going to be a criticism. I have wiped the, clates, the, the slate clean. Subhanallah, the impact of the story of Yusuf, even on our Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam. How about us then when we study these stories? Look as well. At, for example, arrogance. Look at the arrogance of Iblis. The ayat we recited in the beginning of today's uh, section of the Quran. The ayat where Iblis is so arrogant, he blames Allah for his own misguidance. Qala Rabbi bima oh my Lord, you're the one who misguided me. The height of arrogance. And look at Adam when he commits a sin. He also committed a sin. What did Adam say? Rabbana zalamna anfusana. It's my fault, O oh Allah, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. When we read these stories, how can we not be impacted by the difference in Iblis on the one hand and Adam on the other? And examples can go on and on and on. The point is, brothers and sisters, these Quranic stories, they are not just uh, fables. They are not just asatirul awwaleen. They are not just legends. They are true. And they are meant for a reason. And Allah Azza wants us to think about these stories in these stories is ibra what is ibra ibra comes from the arabic word abara uh, which means to go further to, to to go over to go further it's as if the morals from the stories will help you proceed more in life the ibra helps you go further in your life. So the stories in the Quran will give you the motivational tools that you will need to go further in your life. Allah tells us to think about these stories, to reflect upon these stories, and to benefit from them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who ponder over the Quran the way that it deserves to be pondered over. May Allah make us of those who benefit from these stories and who implement the lessons in our daily life. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته